第四十四段演讲题目是 Number Three， 计时开始。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If my friends from the Target Nations were to visit Taiwan for a three-day trip, I would take advantage of this opportunity to show them the spirit of Taiwan. In my mind, the trip would be composed of three parts, namely the historical Taiwan, the natural Taiwan. And the modern Taiwan. The idea is to show my friends what Taiwan has been through, what Taiwan is proud of, and where Taiwan is standing as a modern country. The first day of the trip would be devoted to a historical Taiwan, and Tainan would be our destination. It is the oldest city on the island, and it is the city through which the Chinese culture was systematically introduced into Taiwan. My friends and I will start the tour from the Anping Old Castle. The old red brick walls in the castle will bring our imagination back to 350 years ago, when the Chinese and the Dutch fought each other for the control of the city. I will tell my friends that this old castle is a living witness of two cultures coming together. And it is also a starting point where people in Taiwan started to develop an accepting attitude towards different cultures. After visiting the Anping Old Castle, we will move on to the beautiful Mazu Temple and the Confucius Temple. While my friends are busy appreciating the dignified elegance in these Chinese buildings, I will remind them that the charm of Tainan actually goes beyond these historical sites. Scattered around the city. After, <clears throat> the charm actually lies in the role the city played in the shaping of the modern Taiwan. In a sense, we owe to Tainan our open-mindedness to different cultures. We also owe to Tainan the Chinese heritage. That most of us still honor today. Julian. On the second day, the trip would take us to Hualien, where Taiwan would amaze my friend again. This time, with natural beauty and original culture, we would start from the Tarago Gorge, where my friend was gazing all at the towering cliff and the crashing water cutting through the valley. Prefer they have enough of the splendid view. I would have led them onto an incredible trip. A trip down the beautiful coastal highway, the Highway 11. My friend and I were treated to the most spectacular sea view along the ride. But best of all, we would come across small, peaceful Aboriginal communities, where my friend, which is the real treasure of Taiwan. My friend would be impressed by the colorful art decorating the local houses, and the beautiful handicrafts displayed in the workshop. They are also fascinating. The traditions still alive in the communities, and the touching respect people show toward nature. I'll be proudly telling my friend that if Tainan represents the sophisticated human side of Taiwan, then Hualien must be the reminder how closely Taiwan is connected with nature. Celeste. On the last day, we will travel to Xinyi Commercial District in Taipei to experience a modern Taiwan. When we got off the MRT, we will find ourselves gazing at the skylines defined by tall buildings. Shopping centers featuring international brand names are standing around. Stores and themed restaurants are competing for customers with their most creative services. This is a busy world, but people here are incredibly friendly. When we found ourselves lost, there would always be kind pedestrians taking time to help us out. Finally, we would arrive at the Aslak Bookstore, where my friends would be pleasantly surprised again. This time, with the modern setting inside and a large collection of books in foreign languages there, and I would tell my friend that this is Taipei, a city that has it all, and this is also Taiwan, a country that is prosperous, ambitious, open-minded, and warm-hearted. When we were closing up for our three-day trip with a dinner high up in the Taipei 101, I'm sure that my friends will make an appointment with me for their next visit in Taiwan. 
For how could they not fall in love with Taiwan, a country that's so full of life and so full of beauty? Thank you. Number two. Honorable judges, dear teachers, and fellow students, good morning. I'm Angela. In an epoch of global village, people are aware of the significance of international etiquette. Due to the events of transportation, people obtain more opportunities to travel around the world. As a result, International etiquette is gradually gaining worldwide concern. Be that as you may, why do our youth should pay special attention to this issue? The following are our opinions. Being competent citizen diplomats, making positive first impression, and avoid offending others. Next, my teammate, Tiffany, will elaborate these viewpoints. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a youth with international awareness, being a great citizen diplomat is a part of our responsibility. From our perspective, behaving appropriately is of crucial importance to make good relations with other countries. Even though we're not diplomats, as global citizens, we can still do something to make some positive impact. For instance, many universities in Taiwan such as National Taiwan Normal University, have established a club called Goodwill Ambassadors. In the club, acquiring international etiquette is one of the targets. During the courses, students learn international etiquette and know how to behave aptly in various formal situations. After the training, these members are capable of holding receptions of foreign guests, being competent receptionists in both national and international events. To illustrate the point, Goodwill Ambassadors of NTNU display their courtesy and excellent international etiquette in the flag raising ceremony, 2011. Owing to their outstanding performance, Taiwan left a marvelous impression on all diplomats worldwide and make a successful citizen diplomacy. Next, my teammate, Sydney, will continue with more. Thank you. Friends, moreover, having appropriate international etiquette is the key to making positive first impressions. No matter which occasions you are in, formal or casual ones, behaving aptly can be beneficial. First, as you are in formal situations, knowing international etiquette can show the courtesy and develop positive first impressions. Especially in business, the ignorance of etiquette may result in awful impressions. On the other hand, as you are in for informal situations, positive first impressions also play a critical role. Take myself, for example. Two months ago, I volunteered to host the exchange student in my school. I did a thorough research to ensure I behave politely. By virtue of my effort, the exchange student was impressed and showed her enthusiasm for Taiwanese culture. This was truly a successful first step to build our relationship. Next, my teammate, Nawa, will continue with more. Thank you. Adding on to what my friend said, acquiring international etiquette can make us learn more about various cultures and therefore avoid chances of offending others. In my opinion, every culture contains their own customs and taboos. Without a doubt, understanding their etiquette can lower the possibilities of being misunderstood. Take gestures, for example. In the US, the sign OK means that you feel terrific. Nevertheless, as you are in Brazil, such gesture can have a negative connotation which can insult others. Hence, as a citizen with global awareness, we should seize every opportunity to learn diverse cultures and their etiquettes to prevent us from disrespecting others. Next, the last speaker will sum up our speech. Friends, in the era with convenient transportation, every nation 
connects you one another even more closely. Merely knowing your own culture is insufficient. Needless to say, it is indispensable to be a global citizen and acquire international etiquette. By disciplining our courtesy, we can be successful citizen diplomats, leave wonderful first impression, and avoid insulting people with distinguished cultures. Once we can lay stress on such issue, it will never be a dream that everyone can build a positive friendship with people all over the world. Thank you. The fifth round of the speech is number four. Please start. There used to be a question that baffled us. Why is developing global vision so important? Well, in this rapidly changing society, possessing skills in international mobility and our ability to handle international affairs seem to be essential in this merging global community. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today, we're going to talk about increasing our international mobility and our ability to handle international affairs. And now, my teammate Joy will help provide elaborate explanation on the topic. Thank you, James. International mobility and international affairs force us to play the role of global citizens. As of today, nations in the world are becoming increasingly interconnected, known as globalization. We have entered a generation where both space and time between nations have contracted because of, the because of the development of transportation and technology, and definitely it makes the world a smaller place. Meanwhile, globalization has also brought upon us a new wave of competition where competitors aren't just around you but from all over the world. And the skills of handling international affairs and international mobility will help us stand firm in this highly competitive era instead of being swept away by this tide. Despite all the challenges and obstacles facing us, we're positive we can change them into stepping stones and opportunities, leading us to a splendid performance on the international stage. However, what can we do to reinforce these skills? Morris, the stage is yours. Thank you, Joy. Well, in terms of increasing international mobility, We've come up with a solution consisting of two parts, and the first is our motivation. We should actively seek access to youth exchanges via school, on exchanges, or even the new southbound policy. Temporary work permits and volunteer programs are also available online. After joining the Bali volunteer program two years ago, I found the experience both educating and inspiring and have joined numerous international affairs since. We've also found that the most crucial key to increasing international mobility is taking the first step. The only obstacle we are facing is fear of the unknown. And what about our ability to handle international affairs? I'll leave that to you, Emma. Thank you, Morris. International affairs are what hold the world together like strings of web that link all 195 countries in the world. This implies that all the things happening in the world are connected to us in some way. This raises the importance of our capabilities in the handling of international affairs. Having said that, we can all agree that in order to handle international affairs, we must first keep track of the latest news in the world. International news websites such as Taipei Times, CNN, and BBC are channels that keeps us informed of what's happening around us, as well as big ongoing events happening in the world. Language proficiency plays a crucial part, not only in updating news around us, but also in diplomatic approaches. What's more, holding an open and respectful attitude is the only possibility to earn respect and opportunities to a further engagement in international affairs. What's, and now we'll conclude our speech. Back to you, James. Thank you, Emma. Concluding what we have said above, we all know that globalization is an inevitable trend. So whether we can be capable of reshaping how we see the world, and most importantly, how we think, will definitely be a key that separates us from the rest of the world. 
After one international problem is solved, we move further to a better future. Therefore, possessing skills in international mobility and our ability to handle international affairs can help us do just that, giving Taiwan to the chance to shine on the global stage. This is why increasing our abilities in international mobility and our ability to handle international affairs is crucial. Thank you. The 38th演講題目是 Number 2. 计时开始. Good morning, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. World peace has long been the utopia that all the mankind dreams of and pursues. However, clashes and fights still happen everywhere all the time. Among countries, races, regions, schools, communities, and also families. Why? Misconception, I'll say. In 2015 alone, there were almost 15,000 acts of terror in the world. But the problem is that there is no internationally recognized definition for terrorism, whether there was a political or ideological agenda behind the attack. There's no denying that misconception or misunderstanding is the main culprit. Yes, in the name of democracy and freedom, people tend to passively allow misconception like racism or feud to exist, and conflicts broke out as a result. For instance, this August, because of white supremacy, the violence erupted in Charlottesville. The man behind the wheel who caused the fatal attack was only 20 years old. His blatant disregard for the law is apparently the result of twisted values. Anyone who is instilled with morality and cultivated with virtue will never be so reckless and brutal. Likewise, another racist incident that happened to Nadia Han, an Asian American anchor. The following September also reminded us that it is time for us to pay more attention to educate in this diverse and globalized era. Nadia encountered a discrimination when a white driver nearly striking her, shouting insult at her because of her skin color. After a couple days of thinking, she broke her silence speaking out on her Facebook, which went viral shortly afterwards. She said, we should try to consider and understand why someone might make this mistake and then try to show and teach the person what is true. She believes if we want to effect change, we need to speak out and stand up. And we also have to examine ourselves and check our own bias and our own behavior. And we need to include and invite everyone into the conversation. What she say corresponds to the topic we are talking about now. As a global citizen, we should learn to appreciate and embrace the diversity of the world and equip ourselves with the best etiquette to get along with others, regardless of their genders, races, cultures, religions, or dimensions. Yep, in the name, yep, in, yep, also in September, in the U.S. Air Force Academy prep school, after racial slurs were scrolled outside black students' doors, Lieutenant General conveyed a strong message, treat people with dignity and respect or get out. It shows the core of education, character cultivation, which is conducive for students to form a holistic mindset and subsequently free them from being bullied or coerced on campus or on the internet. A student or anyone who epitomizes everything good about demeanors is surely a person of a sound character. Thus, etiquette is undoubtedly the quintessence of civilization. Yes, as the best-selling author David Mayer interprets, good manners can mean the difference between success and failure in many aspects of life. Knowing and exhibiting proper etiquette is essential to any civilization. In other words, etiquette is pivotal in improving family, social, and professional relationship. In the same token, when it comes to diplomacy, international etiquette, also known as protocol, cannot be overemphasized. 
We may well say international etiquette is a must for everyone. Protocol is to a global citizen, or the peril is to a human being. That's right. Mother Teresa once said, we can do no great thing, but small thing with great love. As an ordinary student, just like you and me, we do not have an ability to change the world, but we can change our way to interact with the world. That is, showing our optimal etiquette when doing with others. Be a decent global citizen, and let the chain of courtesy and affection goes on. Bow. Thank, Thank you. you. The third speaker's topic is number one. Ready? Start. There are countless features of Taiwan worth promoting to the world. As a 15-year-old sport lover and gourmet, I consider passion is definitely one of Taiwan's standout qualities. Watch a baseball game with me and experience the excitement while cheering and singing for your beloved team. You'll understand how we love the sport. Visit any night market, you'll see innovative snacks springing up island-wide. As Taiwan's population is made up of immigrants from all over the world, it's hard to find one type of food to represent Taiwan. We simply embrace all possible recipes by reinventing, integrating, and experimenting. Every bite of delicacy will tell our passion for diverse cultures. Speaking of diverse cultures, Taiwan is probably one of the few countries where people of whatever religions can get along peacefully. You can find temples, mosques, churches, cathedrals, even synagogues in Taiwan. Join in the Mazu patrol and pilgrimage with all kinds of ding tao, also known as zhen tou in Chinese. Participants can discover grassroots spirit of Taiwanese and purify their souls during the trip. Since everyone can find spiritual comfort in his or her own way, peace is definitely another of Taiwan's standout qualities. Having experienced painful colonization and political turmoil, Taiwan has grown into a promising land of democracy. Although we occasionally have to deal with disagreement on public interest, we are blessed with absolute civil liberties and precious peace here. Since my teammates mentioned the grassroots spirits of Taiwan, I must include resilience in one of Taiwan's standout quality. Having experienced various, various of Having experienced various setbacks of civil liberties, economy, democracy, the diplomatic relationship with the international community, we, Taiwan, persist in pursuing progressive value such as democracy and sustainable development. We also have the most diligent farmers who join hands with the agricultural experts to grow fruits, flowers, and grants that always amaze the world. Despite lack of resources, our manufacturers' field of innovation dare to take on the challenge of the best service and the best quality in the world. Exactly. Taiwanese of all works strive to seek excellence in their expertise, demonstrating the rigor of Taiwanese spirit. Our open-handed organizations like Ciji reach out to wherever suffer from loss. Numerous doctors contribute substantially to medical service in wars around the world. We constantly host major international competitions like Summer University and Tour de Taiwan in 2017. Our versatile artists shine on the international stage. The enchanting melody of our indigenous music inspires the world in Olympic Games. The illustrator Jimmy's artworks comfort countless souls around the globe. With passion, resilience, vigor, and the blessing of peace, 
Taiwan is definitely a wonderland. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Number three, Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Ila Formosa. That was the first impression of Taiwan when the Europeans discovered the island. To date, we have always been eager to share the beauty of Taiwan with people from around the world. In 2016, Almost 1.8 million people visited Taiwan from the new southbound policy target nations. If we had the chance to arrange a tour for our friends from the countries, we would want to show them something that ordinary tourists don't see. We will take them on a journey to taste, see, and experience the true but less known beauty of Taiwan. Now, let's welcome my teammates to elaborate on the schedule. Joanna, please. Thank you, John. On the first day of arrival, we plan to stay in North Taiwan and take our friends on a railway tour. Following along the Pingxi branch line, our friends can see many traditional features of Taiwan. The first stop is Houdong Station. It is a paradise for cat lovers since hundreds of cats gather and live in the area. The environment is designed to be friendly to both the cats and visitors so cats are very mild toward humans. Next, we are going to visit Shifen Station. An old street with traditional Taiwanese food and souvenirs is a must-go spot for every tourist. What's more, a spectacular waterfall is just a few minutes walk away from the station. Finally, at Pingxi Station, the railway and the old-fashioned houses form a beautiful background for photos. Pingxi Station's is also famous for sky lanterns. Our friends can send their wishes to their beloved while enjoying the sky lanterns lighting up the sky. So, with hope in our hearts, the trip carries on to the next day. Jessica, please. Thank you, Joanna. On the second day, we are going to take the Taiwan High Speed Rail to Zhanghua and then transfer to our tour bus to Nantou. When it comes to Nantou, you might think of Sun Moon Lake. However, this is not the place where we want to introduce our friend to. Instead, we want to introduce them to Shan Lingxi, a perfect place for those who love nature. At Shan Lingxi, there are more than 10 trails. Each of them leads to magnificent sceneries, including streams, waterfalls, and red cypress forests. In addition, plants in different seasons, such as cherry blossoms in the spring, maple leaves in the fall, make the sceneries even better. We believe that compared to Sun Moon Lake, Shan Lingxi has the advantage of fewer visitors. Therefore, this unique experience can allow our friend to see the true beauty of Taiwan. Now, my teammate Christine is going to tell you more about the schedule of the last day. Christine, please. Thank you, Jessica. On the third day, we'll be taking our guests to Tainan, which is without doubt the culinary center of Taiwan. The food in Tainan, such as guan cai ban and dan zai noodles, isn't about elaboration or luxury. It is about hospitality and simplicity. We want our guests to connect with the street vendors of Tainan. Of course, Tainan is more than just food. At the Qigu Song Mountain, our guests can learn all about the soul industry of ancient Taiwan and enjoy the beautiful illusion as if standing on a snow-covered mountain. In addition, Tainan is also a cultural and religious center in Taiwan. Many of the temples have histories of hundreds of years old, such as the Confucius temples and the Yangping Junwang temples. Despite our religious differences, we hope the artistic and antique structures of our temples can bring our guests serenity. This marks the end of our journey. Back to you, John. Thank you, Christine. Of course, a three-day trip is too short for anyone to fully experience the great parts of Taiwan. 
However, it is certainly enough to give them an idea of how amazing our country is. We believe that the tour we organized will allow our friends to know Taiwan better while they have fun. And the understanding will form a stronger bond between the fellow nations and us. So, with our sincerest hospitality, we want to say, Welcome, Welcome to, to Taiwan. Taiwan! Thank you. The 28th演講題目是 number 4. In the 21st century, cross-boarding has become an easy access to take touch with, the, with foreigners. The first step to increase international mobility is to get over the language barrier. So, English oral capability is required. A famous celebrity once said, when learning English, it's not only, it's not only helps me to communicate with others, but also allows me to understand the mindset of a, for of a foreigner. When learning a foreign language, one isn't only learning how to say it, but also, but also learning the culture behind it. When one is adapted to the culture behind it, he also gains the mindset of the culture. The second step is to having profession. One has to choose a skill or an ability that he or she is interested in and master it roughly. The more, the more competitive he is in his profession, the harder he could be replaced. In the time of our grandfathers, having one skill can feed a family for 50 years. However, it is not enough to survive a family with one skill, but three in this generation. As a result, enriching oneself is also an important asset. Essence. Last but not least is the adaptation to all circumstances and environment. Globalization has not only forcing us to, to learn, and, but forcing us to get in touch with different countries. When we enter other countries, we can't lack the ability to adapt to their food, their culture, and the way to socialize with them. If one fell to acquire this ability, it would be most likely that he would be beaten down by others or unable to show his, per, pro, um, his professional skills to the fullest. We can, when we successfully, when we successfully uh, master the three elements to international mobility, we can, com we can communicate with them easily and without a problem. So, no matter what we face in the future, we can all settle it in a positive way. Thank you. Number two. Greetings, teachers, judges, and fellow competitors. The world is a place with many wants and wishes, but there is one need that resides above all. It is not oil, despite the wars it has started. It is not dominance, despite the strength it bestows. It is a dream that all have dreamt, yet none have dared to believe. Peace. The P of peace position is well within our grasp. 
as youths of Taiwan, we are in a position to push for change, to push for unity, to push for a brighter future. We are standing at the doorstep, looking at the door that leads to our goal. And the key, the centerpiece of the puzzle, is the E, etiquette. This is the most crucial part of diplomacy. It might even be said to be indispensable. Through abiding by the rules of international etiquette, we gain the respect of foreigners when we travel abroad and make them feel well cared after when they visit us. Say a Muslim friend is visiting. Instead of having him over for a feast of pork, we might ask him to dish out the certified Muslim dishes for dinner. Or perhaps we have a Thai guest. Instead of standing silently and letting them pick their own seat, we should show them their seat that their culture asks of them. Or else, they might just stand there uncomfortably. Then, once the meal begins, we can introduce them to the Taiwanese way of having meals, to slide into the seat that is now occupied. But what is etiquette good for? Knowing where to put one's fork and when to dip one's spoon is not enough to stop wars. Using the right hand and nodding at the right times won't guarantee that doves will flutter as all of humanity come together in a chorus of, we are the world. No, it won't but it powers what will, the A of peace, acceptance. Who emits a more trustworthy air? A well-dressed, polite gentleman or a rude screaming louse? Most are inclined to trust the former, and it is just like introducing a culture to a foreign country. To make it accepted, you play by their rules first. Think of it as how French say you when you're barely acquainted you use vu respectfully, which makes you a refined man in their eyes. In time, your transition to calling each other du, which is when they open up to you and be more receptive of what you introduce. By abiding by international etiquette, they feel that you respect them. Thus, you gain their respect. And when you inject your culture into theirs, there will be little resistance. Much like how white blood cells won't attack something that has been accepted by the body. In other words, only through etiquette can we achieve proper cultural acceptance. This is not enough, though. The people may be loud, but this type of progress is slow and informal. This is where the sea kicks in, country to country. The government is a key player in this massive game of diplomacy. They have an ultimate say that the civilians can make a country look great, sound great, and feel great in the public eye. But all these hard work will be for naught if our politicians decide to hate, us, hate each other. Remember for a moment the Cold War and the decisive speech that ended it. It could not have been done by people alone. Only President Reagan could have uttered with such strength behind his words, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Rest assured. Our government is doing a lot of good. We've signed mutual agreements with Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore to go visa-free. This permits us more freedom and convenience while traveling around, further speeding up our process, promoting our culture abroad. Diplomacy, and through it, peace, will be so much smoother when the people and the government work as one. Thus, the final step, the E, envoy, comes into play. More specifically, us, the youth diplomatic envoys. We are the embodiment of the people's hopes and the government's strength. We travel abroad with the people's dreams and the government's mission. We, the envoys, will accomplish peace. We, through proper cultural etiquette, will let Taiwan shine on the international stage. And perhaps, when at last our mission is done, true peace can be achieved. Thank you. The 26对演讲题目是 number three. A famous American journalist, Jane King, once said, New Zealanders are friendly and relaxed people. They welcome visitors and enjoy sharing their country's beauty and lifestyle. In my opinion, 
Taiwan can fit the saying just right. Thanks to the new southbound policy, we are sure to have more friends from the southeastern countries to visit Taiwan in the future in order to make their trip impressive and satisfying. We unveil the beauty of Taiwan in three aspects, cultural tradition, fascinating landscape, and the passion and hospitality in every local's hearts. Next, we'll have Kali. Taiwan consists of various indigenous cultures, and we can invite our friends to participate in the traditional events. Take the Bunong Aboriginal tribe as an example. Their eight-part polyphony, Basibubu, once got the chance to stand on the international stage as the, as the theme song of Olympics, and is even listed as one of the UNESCO World Heritages. Their heavenly harmonious chorus and powerful magnetic voice will definitely give visitors an unforgettable experience. The Harvest Festival of Aboriginal Tribes it's also a grand annual event that can amaze people and is worth visiting once in their lifetime. Enjoying the joyful atmosphere with locals to celebrate their cornucopia, singing and dancing in the traditional Aboriginal folk, having a try of their special rice wine and Aboriginal food, visitors can truly feel the passion and characteristics of Taiwanese culture, since traveling is all about feeling the place the people, and the warmth. Next, we will have Cindy. Sitting on the boundaries of two continental plates, Hualien has been blessed with a diversity of spectacular landscapes. Among them, Sihua Highway is definitely worth visiting. Named one of the most dangerous roads in the world, it is famous for not only the amazing scenery of rolling mountains and the dazzling Pacific Ocean, but also the effort our fearless and mate to pioneer this gorgeous natural wonder. Driving on the winding road, we will be awed by the dangerous path and the stunning scenic sights like Qingshui Cliff. The canyon at Tarako National Park, carved by the Liwu Creek, is also a revelation of natural power. The most phenomenal aspect of the park is its amazing relief. In a single afternoon, tourists can travel from rugged coastal cliffs through a maze of subtropical forested canyons to high elevation subalpine forest. This is how Taiwan demonstrates the beauty of nature in the most unexpected way and will never let the tourists down. Next, let's welcome Abby. The most precious feature that stands out the value of Taiwan is the Taiwanese people. To bring a three day trip to a memorable end, it is always necessary to leave a warm impression in our dear friend's heart. There are plenty of meaningful activities that can enhance the friendship between Taiwanese and foreign visitors. For example, the Sky Lantern Festival in Pingxi is a symbol of blessing and hope. People can show their sincerity and care to their loved ones by releasing the Sky Lantern into the sky, stepping on a historic railway holding the sky lantern with best wishes written on both sides. We hope our relationship with our southbound nation will be cherished in our hearts regardless of nation barriers. As the sky lantern glow in the darkness, with friends all over the world, we believe our friendship with other countries will peacefully last forever. And next we'll have Barbara to sum up. As the fox in The Little Prince once said, it is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eyes. Traveling is not just about exploring the world, but is also a helpful way to form worldwide relationships. This one and only three-day tour is for understanding Taiwanese features, including cultural tradition, remarkable natural scenery, and the inner spirit of hospitality in every Taiwanese heart. This visit for our Southeastern friends should not be merely about sightseeing. With love and passion, this trip will be the most unforgettable life experience in our dear friend's heart.
Thank you. The twenty-five-question question is number five. Good morning, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of the target nations of Taiwan's new South Bond policy, most of our fellow countrymen know little about or more precisely held deep-rooted stereotypes toward people from most of the 18 target nations. For instance, the Indonesians and the Filipinos are often associated with migrant workers whose life is hard in their homeland. However, according to 2017 Index Economic Freedom, Indonesia and the Philippines come in first and second in economic freedom. Therefore, to break up stereotypes and meanwhile promote the new South Bond policy, we young people should play an active role. But how? Now, allow me to introduce Terry to all of you. I believe he has some more ideas to share with us. Now, Terry. Thank you, Kathleen. The first step to clear up stereotypes and deepen Taiwan's ties with the 18 target nations is to bridge the communication gap by learning their languages. In fact, many of my classmates' parents are overseas Chinese from Southeast Asia. By interacting with them, I get to know that the Southeast Asian countries are not as draggy as I imagined. Take Myanmar, for example. Myanmar has huge potential economic growth with GDP growth at 7.7% in 2017 and 8% in 2018. In view of this, I've taken an optional course of Burmese for more than one year at school and entered a Burmese speech contest last year. As for me, being able to understand what the locals say and make myself understood must be able to help overcome the long-standing barriers. Well, Mina, do you have any other ideas as to how to help promote the new Southbound policy? Definitely, Terry. Aside from learning languages of the target nations to break up the stereotypes and language barriers, college students can volunteer to teach foreigners Mandarin in Taiwan and abroad since the Ministry of Education has set up a program called Taiwan Connection to promote Mandarin learning all over the world. Besides, New Taipei City Government is promoting another program called On Air meant for the kids of Taiwanese new immigrants to visit enterprises of the target nations. There is still another project, International Youth Ambassadors Exchange Program, for young people to enroll in. As you can see, young people in Taiwan are offered numerous official channels to help boost the cultural exchange and introduce Taiwan to the target nations. In this way, not only the strengths of Mandarin and Chinese culture, but also, the merits of Taiwan can be seen and spread. Most of all, the bilateral relation will be firmly developed. Now, I think Stephanie must have some other insight to share with us. Stephanie. My pleasure. On top of official channels, young people can also help advocate a new southbound policy by acceding to the programs launched by non-governmental organizations. One is Cambodia Taiwan Education Program, or CTEP. It is aimed at helping Cambodian rural youth by providing education and promoting employment. As of June 2017, CTEP has recruited hundreds of youth volunteers from Taiwan, offering them the chance to help the underprivileged and to grow through service. On the other hand, to help the 600,000 migrant workers adapt to life in Taiwan. Another NGO is the Stand Up. It's 140. 140 calls for young people to dedicate themselves to teaching their immigrants practical skills and knowledge. It hosts various cultural exchange activities regularly to foster the mutual understanding between the new immigrants and the Taiwanese. Both the NGOs contribute a lot to the new Southbound policy. To summarize our standpoint, let me ask Kathleen to sum up for us. Kathleen. Sure, Stephanie. As you can see, young people in Taiwan can help to promote the new South Bond policy. They can learn languages of the target nations to break up language barriers. 
like what Terry has shared with us. They can make Taiwan sing through various official channels, just like what Mina has talked about. Moreover, through NGOs, they can seek to open up new venues that will enable Taiwan to make meaningful contributions home and abroad, as Daphne has suggested. Therefore, I'm firmly convinced that with everyone's efforts, the new southbound policy will be no more an armchair strategy, but definitely a, a dream come, come true. true. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Number five. Taiwan Southbound Policy is a new initiative developed by President Tsai Ing-wen's government to forge closer ties with 18 Asian and Australasian countries. The Southbound Policy is a crucial part of Taiwan's economic and trade strategy as Taiwan tries to reduce its dependency on China for trade. As of 2014, 30% of all Taiwan's exports were sold to China, making China Taiwan's largest export destinations and creating huge imbalances between Taiwan and China. The Southbound policy will forge closer ties with other countries, and if successful, will diversify Taiwan's export market, thereby reducing its reliance on China. The southbound policy officially targets 18 countries. However, for the policy to be successful, focus is necessary. To best meet the goal of diversifying Taiwan's export markets, we believe countries with large populations, growing economies, and increased consumer spending should be the primary targets of this policy. Based on these criteria, we believe Taiwan should initially focus their efforts on Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. Australia and Singapore are obvious choices. Both countries have high average incomes, are stable, and generally have strong consumer markets. Australia already hosts many Taiwanese exchange students, and Singapore is a popular destination for Taiwanese tourists. As for Malaysia, it continues to remain a regional economic powerhouse with a huge population and the third highest GDP per capita in ASEAN behind Singapore and Brunei. Another benefit to partnering with Malaysia is that it is a neighbor with Singapore, and many of the big regional distributors in Singapore cover both markets. Indonesia is also chosen as it has, over recent years, been one of the fastest growing economies in the ASEAN region. There is a rapidly growing middle class in Indonesia that will no doubt be interested in consumer electronic products from Taiwan. Indonesia also has a large overseas Chinese population that could easily be partnered with to forge deeper networks into the local Indonesian markets. Young people in all sectors have an important role to play. The most obvious involvement is in education and cultural exchanges through exchange student programs. However, we believe that Taiwan's government should help to open summer internship programs in multinational Taiwanese companies that already have a presence in the target countries. By doing this, young people will be exposed to working in these cultures early in their careers. These internship programs will benefit them greatly as they will get to see how business in these cultures and business context is carried out. We believe the new southbound strategy is a good policy that will diversify Taiwan's markets, reduce Taiwan's dependency on China, help to maintain Taiwan's importance in Asia, and help create strong futures for Taiwan's young generations. However, for this program to be successful, we do need to focus on partnering with the right countries that include Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. We also need to ensure Taiwan students are exposed to these countries and cultures through educational and cultural exchanges and internships. If we can do this successfully, 
We believe Taiwan will continue to be number one. Thank you.